Coral Island is the new farming game from Indonesia that have a big potential to be in the next Stardew Valley. And as Indonesian myself, in this video, I will tell you some of the Indonesian representation, cultures, and reference that I found in the game. If you found more Indonesian stuff, you can also comment below. Before we are going straight to the topic, I want to talk about how proud I am that there is finally a game that have a lot of Indonesian stuff in it. As Indonesian and as a gamer, it's really rare to find any kind of representation from video games. With that being said, let's talk about the Indonesian stuff in Coral Island. At the start of the game, we already met two Indonesian characters from the game, the Carpenter family, Joko and Dinda. They also have a son named Arki and a nephew called Surya, also a really Indonesian name. Not only their name, but their appearance are also very Indonesian, especially Mr. Joko. If you don't know about this, Joko wear like some kind of bandana hat, but in Indonesia it's called Blancon. Blancon is a traditional Japanese headgear and made of batik fabric. Back then, it was used by people with high caste and can only able to be made by special people. Nowadays, Indonesian, especially Japanese, usually wear blancon for formal event like wedding and also some people use it on their daily lives too as a fashion, but it's not common to wear blancon for daily use. Next, we talk about something that I already mentioned before which is batik. Batik as you can see as the pattern of Joko's Blancon and Eva's shirt is an ancient art form of Indonesia made with wax resistant dye on fabrics. Batik is commonly used by Indonesians in various rituals, ceremonies, traditions, celebrations, and even in daily uses. Quoted from the Wikipedia page, on October 2, 2009, UNESCO officially recognized the batik as a masterpiece of oral and intangible heritage of humanity from Indonesia. Since then, Indonesia celebrates the National Batik Day annually on October 2, where usually people wear batik for the rest of the day. I also seen some batik fashion going around even in international scale and personally I thought batik is a really cool fabric and the pattern is very unique. If you ever visit Indonesia someday, I recommend you to buy the original batik clothes here. The original made batik is pretty expensive though. Next, we talk about the Indonesian buildings and constructions that I noticed in Coral Island. The most obvious one is the Bali structures from the Goddess Lake and some that you can also found in the forest. If you're going to the mine, it looks like Bali straight away too. Bali is a province in Indonesia and probably the most well-known one internationally. A lot of tourists from the globe going to Bali to experience the exotic nature and vibe from the province. Bali is the only Hindu majority province in Indonesia and based on the Wikipedia, with 86.9% of the population adhering the Balinese Hinduism. Even me as Indonesian myself, I only went to Bali like three times in my life and I always amazed how special the place it is. It's a beautiful place with a tradition that you need to follow and know before you visit the place and someday I hope I can move there because it's a really nice place. Another Indonesian building reference is the Alun Alun Square. Alun Alun is literally translated to square or plaza in Indonesian so I guess Alun Alun Square is square square. <laughs> in Coral Island there is also Jan that you can see from the first cherry blossom festival and Susajen from the goddess lake temple. Janur is a young leaf of big palm tree used as a tool by tribes in Indonesia as part of their daily lives. Usually Janur placed in the roadside at a single bamboo indicates that a wedding party is being held in the street where it's erected. Even until nowadays, whenever there is a Japanese wedding, you can see Janur as a way to indicate where is the wedding party. Not only Japanese, Janur also used by Balinese and Sundanese. Next is Sesajen that you can find in the Goddess Lake Temple. Sesajen is literally offering for the spirits used by people who have a spiritual faith. It usually consists of flowers and foods and 
They believe that it's a way to connect to the spirits or ancestors. That's why sesajen in Coral Island is a way for you to help the goddess. People in real life also did that. In Bali, you can find a lot of sesajen in every place and you must be really careful to not trip it away or not doing anything stupid with it. Next, let's talk about the Indonesian foods that I noticed in Coral Island. The most obvious one is tumpeng that mentioned by Waku at the Cherry Blossom Festival and also being celebrated by people at the festival. Tumpeng is an Indonesian concept rice dish with side dishes of vegetables and meat originally from Japanese cuisine of Indonesia. The rice is made by using a cone-shaped bamboo container. The rice itself may be plain steamed rice, uduk rice or rice cooked with coconut milk or yellow rice which is uduk rice called with kunyit or turmeric. People in Jawa, Bali, and Madura usually make tumpeng to celebrate important events. However, all Indonesians are familiar with tumpeng. Surya also mentioned about lodeh, the famous traditional Japanese food. Jangan lodeh is a vegetable soup in coconut milk. I also noticed something that looked like satay ayam in the festival and something that look like the famous mangko ayam or chicken bowl in Indonesia. If you go to the tavern, you can also buy serabi from Frank. Serabi is a traditional coconut pancake. Most of traditional serabi taste sweet. However, another safari version also exists that use onchom toppings. Now we talk about the Japanese reference and representation in the game. If you're going to the store that sell house decoration, you can instantly feel the Japanese vibe from the store. It reminds me of Hamsah Batik store in Jogja, where they sell Japanese souvenirs and a famous restaurant in Jogja called Raminton. In the store, you can see some Japanese objects like keris and wayang kulit. Keris or kris is a traditional Japanese weapon. It is an asymmetrical dagger with distinctive blade patterning. But a weapon and spiritual object, keris are often considered to have an essence or presence considered to possess magical powers with some blades possessing good luck and the others possessing bad luck. Chris usually used as a display, as talismans with magical powers, weapons, an accessory for ceremonial dress, or an indicator of social status. I also can see that Chris could be a perfect weapon to be included in a game like Elden Ring to be honest, with the magical powers and possession from the weapon itself. The other thing is Wayang Kulit. Wayang is a traditional form of puppet theater play originally from the Indonesian island of Java. Performances of Wayang Puppet Theater are accompanied by a gamelan orchestra in Java. The dramatic stories depict mythologies as well as local adaptions of cultural legends. Traditionally, a Wayang is played out in a ritualized midnight to dawn show by a dalang which is an artist and a spiritual leader. When you check the interior design in Coral Island, you can see Japanese style design from the game. It includes a lot of Japanese furniture there. Other Indonesian interior design in Coral Island is the Kosan style. Kosan is the Indonesian boarding house, usually rented by college students and office workers. The furniture and object in the game is pretty accurate to the real life look of Kosan. The last one that I want to talk about is the famous Balap Karung mini game in Coral Island. Balap Karung or the sack race or potato race is a competitive game in which participants place both of their legs inside a sack that reach their waist and hop forward from a starting point towards a finish line. The first person to cross the finish line is the winner of the race. Balap Karung often takes place on a national independence day along with numerous other events such as the egg and spoon race and also the lomba makan kerupuk one. <laughs> I don't know what is the English word for it. So that's all the Indonesian cultures, representation, and reference in Coral Island that I found. I'm amazed that the developer of the game was able to include this many stuff in the game to be discovered by people around the world. Shout out to Maddie from my discord who gave me 
this idea to make this video and for any of you who leave the comment in my other video about Coral Island. There are also other characters in the game who I think also Indonesian or at least have an Indonesian reference like Rati, the lady that come to Starlight Town every now and then to sell stuff and Jim who look like Chef Juna, the famous Indonesian chef from the Master Chef show with his sassy vibe from him just like in the game. Hopefully with this video you can learn more about Indonesian cultures. Consider subscribing because I play a lot of farming live sim games like Coral Island and follow my Twitch to watch me streaming variety of games. In the meantime, I think you will enjoy this video that I picked for you. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. See ya!